Um, this is a small house out the back of Lawn in a heavily forest, another one of our bushfire threat sites. Uh, you can see the bush to the north there. And very early days, this is a house for one person um, mainly. And from day one, we always thought of it as being a very protective building that if you like, had her back, if that makes sense. So it's very closed and mute little box, um, especially to the south side and it open up to the northeast um, to the views and sun. And it was often thought about, these are some early sketches, just describing this idea of living in a nook where the building literally holds you and encompasses the different activities of daily life. So the beginnings of a plan here, um, you can see a sort of pocket for bathing, sleeping, dining, etc. And the evolution of that, an interest in poche and mass, um, and what that might mean for carving out a form, uh, how many bites, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Early days, we thought of this as an in situ concrete. Uh, project. She was very keen on concrete. I should say she's a photographer. So the sort of play of light across the surface and shadow is what she lives for. Um, so we did explorations of taking a mass, carving that out. Um, this was a plan at one stage where we went a bit off, off track, I guess, um, got expensive. So then there was a shift to um, precast. This just shows you some of the sort of iterations that we went through and the expansions and contractions, which often happen with um, scope creep. And then with budget issues, returning to the idea of precast, uh, shrinking it and just rationalizing it to see how much dynamism you might get internally um, through a minimal number of parts. So this idea of a kind of clear, tight rigor with precast and the expression of that very much so for the interior beauty was a real driver with the project. So here we have the outside and the outside envelope is very rational. It has four panel types, both um, thermomass mass insulated and non-insulated ones. And you can see that even the window alignments, it's exactly the same frame each time. So it's very regular and there's cost benefits that flowed on from that. And for a photographer, uh, which I sort of thought about later, actually not at the time, but that sort of perfect framing is a really nice way to index the different views through the property. Then internally, the precast panels um, are what give the form for the internal spaces. And again, we got it down to four, four panel types. So it made a big difference to the cost and the feasibility of the project. So here is the plan with those two sets of panels all together. And, um, and this is just a nice summary, if you like, of that evolution from the sketch, the thinking, the poche through to the final uh, construction plan. And that interest of how an early idea of pockets of space, the shift from something precast to to uh, sorry from in situ to precast what that meant so to take you through the plans the location plan you can see it sort of inflected to northeast towards the bush but also very distant sea views uh, a series of little skylights which just scatter light down um, those internal walls which otherwise has no openings in the south elevation and then just showing you the plan as it is um, from left to right it's sort of her end of the house, if you like, with bathing, which was a kind of key space for her and a feeling of being safe, but absolutely bathing in the view. So, um, so her area, then a bathroom, which is shared, and then living, dining kitchen, a breezeway, which uh, then links with guests on the very right hand side. Um, things like circulation spaces incorporated into the rooms through sliding panels and so on. Uh, section, so an upper and a lower terrace, um, sort of pretty simple, it feels hunkered down. So yes, externally very mute, very much about a kind of defensive bastion, if you like, in that um, under fire threat type of landscape. And then on approach, the outdoor shower on the right hand side, another one of those precast shells, um, stepping down into the breezeway, right hand side guest and the other side, um, the uh, main part of the house. From the other side, swinging around um, 
you can see here the rigor of those windows and also how the um, the mesh screens, which um, can be, you can fully open the whole house up so it is effectively a veranda, it's only one room deep, um, or you can have it sort of with the glass um, open screen. And um, and those, those bushfire screens, they work for embers, insects, and give a bit of shade as well. So internally, this is the living space. You can see that expression of the panels. It's very sort of explicit and celebrated. Uh, and the dark ceiling just sort of amplifies the light and the small apertures and the wash down the surface of the spaces. Um, this kind of chiaroscuro uh, sensibility of the house as you move through it um, with that side side light, which was very important to her as well. The shower space, uh, again, a little aperture and that um, extraordinary quality of light in it. And then the bathing area at the very end, which looks out towards that beautiful um, bush to the north. So as I was saying before, this expression of gaps was also um, a way of being very deliberate about use of precast, but a device for managing things like cavity sliders, um, which are between those, and similarly with little recess lights and conduits, which uh, manage through the gap between the panels. Um, again, apertures, which are throughout, and, um, and the sort of play of light, which ultimately is what the house is all about. I think the thing for me that's most intriguing about this house is that it was designed for a photographer, but the it has really been elusive to photograph. And I've thought a bit about this, and I it's sort of probably obvious, but photos are always about what's in front of you. That's what you capture through the camera. And yet it's very hard to describe or capture the sense of being enfolded or encompassed by space. And that's exactly what the intention of this was always about an interior that was very protective and like a sort of a seat really, as I say, had your back. So it's the very thing you can't capture in a photo. However, um, haptic versus optics, I think on that note, I'll hand it over to you for questions. <laughs>